Santa Cruz County is a great place to live. And from the furry to the feathery, it attracts residents of all sorts. But one of the longest tenured among us is also one of the least well known. They're kind of elusive. They just sort of move around like they have a purpose, but they're not in any hurry to get there. We're just a drop in the bucket compared to the amount of time that they've been around. The Western Pond Turtle is California's only native freshwater turtle. They've outlived the dinosaurs and have learned to survive in our modern world. When you actually get the opportunity to see one, it's just a, it's a pretty special moment. Why are these relic reptiles so special? Where can we find them? And what can we do to help them survive for years to come? Rancho Del Oso State Park is where White Oak Creek meets the ocean. It's a place that most people come for the wind and the waves. But the western pond turtles are here for the clean flowing waters and diverse habitat. What I've learned from spending time with turtles is patience. <laughs> Kit Crump is a biologist studying how the pond turtles use their environment. What makes them a challenge to study and a challenge to observe and enjoy is that they're what we call kind of a cryptic or hidden species. About the only time you see them is when they're sunning themselves on a log. Despite the challenges in studying western pond turtles, scientists have learned that they require three distinct habitats. They need wetlands, which offer these omnivores the many types of food they eat, including plants, insects, and even fish. And these wetlands must have logs for the turtles to bask on. This is the lower section of Waddell Creek, and it has numerous pieces of large buoy debris that make excellent basking sites. In July, August, and September, the females need upland areas to nest and lay their eggs. So this is what a western pond turtle nest might look like. It's in gravel, they basically lay their eggs in gravels. They will dig a small hole like this. She'll deposit it anywhere from five to 15 eggs and then cover them up and then leave them. And then the sun will basically bake these eggs, incubate them. And after the hatchlings are ready to come out, they will basically come out this same hole, again about this big, leave the nest here and then head back out to the nearest water source. During the winter, they need a refuge that's safe from floods throughout the rainy season. So in the winter months, western pond turtles will escape the high stream flows and migrate up to these upland areas to overwinter. So this is the kind of material that a adult turtle would burrow under, and this acts as sort of a camouflage and somewhat of an insulation for them. The most thing, important thing people need to know about pond turtles is that they're actually fairly sophisticated, long-lived animals that have very specific habitat needs, but they're also very flexible in how they go about getting those habitat needs met. Another location the turtles call home, and a place we can get a better view of them, is high in the Santa Cruz Mountains, on the shores of a serene lake. We're at Loch Lomond Reservoir, and it's owned by the city of Santa Cruz. Ranger Judy Cole patrols the lake daily, monitoring water quality and keeping an eye on the turtles. Here at Loch Lomond, our main goal is to provide safe, clean drinking water to Santa Cruz. However, a great benefit is that we provide environments that are pristine and natural and very critical to the well-being of the pond turtles and other wildlife here. A habitat that's healthy for pond turtles also supports life of all types. It's just amazing to watch how life goes on around you out here. I've seen birds fly alongside the boat. We have dragonflies that just come and just light right on the boat and ride with you for a while. It's a gorgeous spot to be in addition to being a water source for the, for the city. Nestled in the heart of the San Lorenzo Valley watershed, this lake is open to the public and is a great location for seeing turtles in the wild. These uh, turtles at our particular location are up lake, and a lot of people don't even notice them. They'll go all the way by and they'll, they'll totally miss the turtle because you, you can hardly see them. When approaching them, I would say approach quietly 
and keep it a distance. Binoculars are wonderful. That's what I use when I go out so that I don't disturb them. We would recommend a distance of maybe 40, 50 feet at the, at the minimum so that you're not disturbing the turtles. When you go up in a boat, just be very quiet and very, um, very still so that they aren't frightened. There's a lot of excitement when a person sees a western pond turtle because it is you know, a unique experience. First of all, it's hard to sneak up on them because they are real wary of people. Um, they have to be. In working here, I have discovered the, the beauty of this place. And I would love if people would appreciate and value the uniqueness of the environment, of the animals, of the water, of everything up here. Because it's an, it's an amazing place, and it, I want it to stay that way. Most turtles spend their lives fending for themselves in the wild. But when a turtle is injured or can't survive on its own, there's one refuge many of them end up at. It's Jacques Cousteau. There's the Sacramento turtle lady. There's the Santa Barbara turtle lady. But um, here, they call me the turtle lady. Hang on, Flanders. Marnie Stroud is a former teacher and now a caretaker for many species of turtles that vets and wildlife centers have rescued. When they reach a certain point, they make a decision whether they feel the animal can be returned to the wild or not. And I'm the sucker for our not. Hey, Cooter, haven't seen you for a while. Hey, Cagney, how you doing, old man? Marnie doesn't discriminate in the turtle she cares for. This refuge is also a home to non-native species like red-eared sliders, painted turtles, and many others. Check out the nails on this dude. Eat your heart out, Barbara Streisand. In the wild, these non-native species are more aggressive than the pond turtles and often outcompete them for food and other resources. That's meant disaster for the pond turtles. But here, in this United Nations for Turtles, Marnie keeps the peace. I was strict in the classroom, I'm strict in the habitat. So I don't mess around. Marnie's tireless efforts in teaching about and caring for these turtles comes from a deep respect. As simple as it appears, it's been able to survive catastrophes that wiped off a great percentage of life on Earth. But they survived it. And I think we need to show some respect for that. For Marnie, Judy, and Kit, showing respect for the turtles means protecting them in the wild by not disturbing them, by not releasing non-native species, and by cleaning up their environment. It means preserving the habitats they depend on, from the wetlands to the uplands. And showing respect for the turtles means learning more about them and from them. What we can learn from these turtles in terms of our own survival is not to be too fixed on one solution to a problem, is to be adaptable, flexible, patient, and resourceful. But I would like people to know about the western pond turtle, is what a precious animal it is. These animals were here first, and that we need to respect their habitat, their well-being, their right to be here and you know protect them for the next generation to come because you know they may not be around if we don't take care of them <laughs>